switching over to loanable funds. In the money market, we're talking about how much money is available in the economy. With loanable funds, we're looking at how much money is actually available for borrowing, which is a lot lower than the amount that's available in the whole economy if you're talking about all the different aspects of the money supply. So for this graph, we're going to keep the interest rate up here. And again, you can use an I or a lowercase r. Either one is fine. Just try to be consistent. And on the bottom, instead of quantity of dollars, we're going to say quantity of loanable funds. And I've seen some people abbreviate it QLF. Um, if you do that, I would just write out to the side somewhere what it is so you don't confuse an AP reader. All right, this graph, super simple, the way it's drawn. There are some complications in what it means. But all you're going to do to draw it is just demand and supply, equilibrium rate, equilibrium quantity. Very simple. Now, what does this mean? The supply of loanable funds depends completely on, or almost completely on, the money that people save. That's your source. Okay? So if the government, for example, was to institute some kind of a tax policy to encourage people to save more money, then that would make more available in the loanable funds market. Because what happens is, when the money is in the bank, the bank is required to hold a certain amount for its required reserves. That's what it has to have on hold at the Fed or in its bank vault as cash. What they have left over in their excess reserves, they can take a portion of that and loan out. So, Whatever money is in the bank to be saved, some of that is available for loans. So that's where this comes from. Policies that encourage savings will make more available here. Who demands loanable funds? Now, there are some discrepancies in some textbooks over how some of these curves shift, so you know, how, how these fit together, but I'll get to that in a minute. For the demand, we're primarily talking about investors. Maybe government, maybe some consumption, but most of the time you're going to be dealing with it in terms of investment. Because again, investment is the one that is most interest sensitive out of all your other components of GDP. So this is where we're going to be starting. Now, if we go back to the idea that we just did with money market, with government running a deficit. What happens with the government deficit? Now some books will tell you, and this is what makes more sense to me, that when the government is running a deficit and it is demanding money in the money market, that it is also demanding, demanding loanable funds. So what happens over here is that demand increases so that you have a higher interest rate and a higher quantity of loanable funds that's demanded. So that when you have higher demand in the money market, higher demand here, you see a corresponding jump in interest rates. For me, that makes sense. But that's not what all the textbooks say. Some books will look at it and say, OK, if government is running a deficit, then government is not saving money, that the level of national savings goes down. So that what actually happens is not that demand shifts, but that supply goes to the left because national savings decreases. So some books will do this and have supply shifting left with interest rates going up. Now, there was a question on the free response in the AP exam in the last few years where they would have taken either of those answers as correct, either a decrease in supply or an increase in demand. 
be able to explain it, be consistent, and whatever you do, don't show both, because if you show both, it's going to be a little confusing on your graph. For me, it makes more sense to have an increase in demand here, and when I put this side by side with the money market, you'll see why. So now we've done money market and we've done loanable funds. Let's put them side by side so you can see how a change in the money market can impact loanable funds. The key is making sure that you don't have backward interest rate changes because if you do that, you got something wrong. So let's start with our interest rate and our quantity of money. Here, interest rate, quantity of loanable funds. Loanable funds graph, demand, supply, money market, vertical supply, and downward sloping demand. Now let's put in our equilibrium interest rate. That's not quite level, it's close. Equilibrium and over here. Example that we did a moment ago. We said government deficit increase in one, increase in the other, both show the interest rate going up, be consistent. Another thing that you might have is a question dealing with taxes. So let's say that we had increase in taxes, which means that people have to get more money to pay higher taxes. What you would expect to see as corresponding shifts is that the demand for money would increase driving up the interest rate. And again, quantity doesn't change because it's stationary. What happens in loanable funds and why? If people are demanding money, then they're not saving it. And when you see savings reduced, then your supply of loanable funds is reduced. So what's going to happen? Supply shifts to the left. Interest rate up, quantity down. Make sure, again, that if you have to do a problem where you're using both of these graphs, that you're showing a corresponding shift. Because if one goes up and the other one goes down, then you need to rethink it. Go back and read the problem again and try to figure out what happened. My guess would be if they're not going the same way, that your problem is probably in the local funds market. But just remember, with money supply graph, we're talking about the supply from the Fed, it's fixed. Money demand could be government, investment, or consumers. If you're talking about loanable funds, supply is the amount of savings that's available, and demand predominantly is going to be investors. But again, could be government if you're dealing with a deficit. 